Hello everybody and welcome once again to Season Up Sunday. For today, for the second video, I've prepared a position composed by Grandmaster in Composition Johanan Afek. And this position won the second prize in the 60 years jubilee of Jan Tiemann. Okay, uh, I really enjoyed this position and I wanted to share it with you, but before I go more into the solution of this position, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what I've been doing this past week or two. So I created this Facebook page where I've decided to share, of course, my videos, not only on YouTube, but also on Facebook, but in the same time, post every day various positions. Sometimes they are very simple positions, other times they are mates, other times studies, like this one. And I'm going to uh, post as often as possible and then towards the end of the week I'm going to prepare a video or more of the positions that I found more difficult and I'll be sure to share them with everybody so in case you're struggling finding a solution you can of course check it out. So in order to get more up-to-date information about the positions I'm posting because I won't be doing it on the YouTube channel I suggest you to go check my Facebook page. You can find me by my name, Sabina Francesca Foyshur, or at Chess Entertainer. And um, the posts will be there every single day. So, with that said, let's get back to this amazing position. The first time I posted the position, actually, I thought uh, Grandmaster uh, Johanna Nafek uh, composed it together with Jan Tiemann, but of course it was a big mistake of mine. And so he was the sole composer of this position and he won the second prize in the 60 year jubilee of Jan Tiemann. So hopefully soon we'll actually see a video created by Johanna Nafek together with Jan Tiemann, but for the moment, he is the sole composer of this brilliant study. So it is once again, why to move and win. Okay, so by now you should have paused the video and started um, solving it, of course, because I'm going to start sharing the solution. The reason I find this uh, position so brilliant is that there are a lot of ideas included as you go along to solve the position. So let's get started. First, we notice that this king in b8 looks like it's staying on a mate on the eighth rank. But until that happens, I mean, their piece is on the eighth rank. There's, it's not so easy to just put the rook there and be checkmated, specifically because, you know, this one is going to be attacked. So certainly you need to find more complicating things than that. Now, it's, you know, quite natural to start with the check here. So we go rook b7, check, king a8. But then what do we do next? Because our checks, well, checks where we're not giving away material have stopped. And now, you know, we need to find a way to, to do what? Well, what we need to do eventually is get this bishop away from c8, from f8, and then promote. That would be, you know, a dream come true. But it doesn't come without a price. So in order to be able to promote in f8, we certainly need to sacrifice some material. So we go rook a7 check. Now here we're utilizing this mate in case you go king b8. Here's one theme with a king that's stuck by its own knight and mate a7 b7 has been seen before. Okay, so this idea may be simple, but don't worry. We've got more complicated ones as the position advances. So knight takes a7. Okay, now that king is really on mate, so we were able to actually blockade the king, utilize the c6 pawn to blockade b7, and now we can play rook e8 check. Now, as I mentioned to you, by the way, in the previous video, which I hope you have seen, every single piece in a study is going to be used for a certain thing. There's no piece that is there for no reason. And if it wouldn't be on that particular square, the position would probably not work out if 
you're not sure about my statement, be sure to make small changes in the position and you're going to see things won't work out. If you happen to find that something would work, well, let me know and uh, I'll try to, to uh, figure out <laughs> what's going on. Okay, so here after rook e8 check, black has two moves, right? Either putting the knight to c8 or the queen to b8. But if you just play queen b8, the position will finish much faster. Simply capture, king takes. Now bishop d6 check. You have to go somewhere, maybe a8. Now white is going to promote. And then it's going to be like a simple mate. Queen, king a7, queen b7 mate. That's very simple. But we've got a new idea to be used. Mate on the 8th rank. Okay. So, in order for black to escape this difficulty, they just go knight c8. Okay, knight c8. Well, it's a free knight, so we never say no to a free knight, unless we have something better. But rook takes c8 check. Once again, queen b8 makes no sense, because there's just going to be a capture, bishop d6, and even if it might not be a mate, white will promote and win the game. So black has to play king a7. Okay, now what to do, because... We really want to promote, and if we can promote with check, it would be amazing. So white continues bishop c5 check. Okay. Black has two answers in this position, either capturing the bishop or taking a king road by playing king a6. Now, if black goes king a6 in this position, white can promote. And as you will well notice, the king is very well protected. Black might have one or two checks, but that's it. And so, for example, if black tries to give queen h2 check, we can protect our king by playing bishop f2. And in case of rook a5 check, well, we'll just go king b1. You can sacrifice a couple more pieces, but your king is not on stalemate. So that's not going to be sufficient for black. And um, unfortunately, for example, if you're trying to be uh, wise and promote your deep pawn, white is just going to checkmate you after rook a8, king b5, queen c5 mate. Oops, I'm sorry. So this is certainly not something that black would want. And if, of course, black doesn't try to be wise, it's very tough to play in this position. White has one pawn, one knight, and one bishop extra, and your king is much weaker than white's. So, there's no um, better move than capturing the bishop. Okay, now what to do? Because if we just promote here to a queen, black might have some way to make a draw. For example, queen g2 check. And if you go king a3, rook a5 check. You have to go king b4. And now black is going to give you a lot of checks and also win your knight in c1. And uh, there's no way for white to escape these checks. That is the reason why white has to find a better move than promotion. Now black has a threat, so you cannot just go on to promote. Even if you have a piece up, it won't be for much longer. So in this position, we have to find a way to promote with check. That is something that I mentioned. So rook a8 check. Once again, black has two choices, capturing the rook or going king b6. But now if you go king b6, notice the rook in a8 has taken control over the a5 square. So now this won't be a big threat because the rooks will be able to be traded. So in this position, white can simply promote. And, uh, well, that rook a5 doesn't work. Any checks, for example, queen h2 check is going to be met by king a3. No more checks. Well, they're checks, but uh, they're not good. They're, black would simply sacrifice material. And if black decides to capture the knight, we are going to be the first one checking until eventually there's going to be a checkmate. Queen and rook, certainly you cannot escape that. Okay, so king b6 definitely wasn't the right choice, so let's get that rook under our belt.
Okay, king takes a8. And finally, white is ready to promote with check this time. Check rook, actually. And here, once again, black has two choices. Either going queen b8 or king a7. If they go king a7, the rook is going to be captured with check. And then, eventually, there's going to be a mate here. If, if black plays king a6, once again, we need to realize how this king is restricted by white's pieces. So we certainly won't let it escape anymore. We can simply play b4, threatening mate in a5. And uh, black has no way to survive this. It would be great if they could sacrifice both their pawn and queen, because that would be a stalemate. But unfortunately, that won't be possible because we won't capture the pawn, right? We will take the queen, but not the pawn. Okay, so after queen, uh, f8 queen, black has to go queen b8. What next? If we trade, obviously, that's not going to be a winning endgame, right? Because we cannot promote that pawn. We can, of course, capture the d3 pawn, but after... Black captures this one, the rook can be sacrificed on the b pawn, and it's going to be a draw. That's why in this position, we're going to capture the rook. Now it is the right time. We've traded the rooks, now black has less material to try to create some threats, and uh, we should be able to win here. But wait, the study is not over yet. There is still this d3 pawn. And, um, you know... Black can simply play d2. Have we thought about this? Well, we better have, because this is a very typical idea. d2 attacks the knight, so wants to promote to in c1 with knight, with, uh, well, possibly <laughs> knight, but the queen too. And then, of course, that's the main, uh, the main idea to promote in d1 with queen. So what to do here? The study is not over yet. We cannot just give queen a5 check and say, well, we're going to win the d2 pawn because of queen a7, which is a very tricky move for black. Not only do I cover the check, but I'm also pinning your queen. So you can't just take in d2 as simple as you thought. And in fact, here you're even losing because you're forced to trade the queens. And now there's no way for white to stop one of the promotions. So do not make this blunder. Okay, well, if you don't do that, uh, you certainly need to consider pushing your pawn because he is going to promote, we have to promote as well. So, we go for c7. Okay, c7, c7, what does black do? If they simply take in c1 and try to promote a knight hoping for a stalemate, well, we certainly won't capture the, the knight, we will play king b1. Why aren't we capturing the knight, you might ask? Well, because now simply queen takes c7, black got rid of their pawn on the board, so now after they take in c7, you cannot capture the queen because of stalemate, and this position should end in a draw. Because white won't be able to, uh, to convert the advantage of their extra pawn, unfortunately. Okay, so... We have to play king b1, but it's okay. There's nothing wrong with this move. And now if black, for example, captures in b3, simply king takes c1. And another beauty of this study, the queen does control all the possible checks in this position that are, you know, uh, not sec... I mean, and the king controls the other ones. So... Um, no matter where you're trying to give away your queen, you're not going to make um, a draw because as I capture it with the king, queen, your king will have plenty of space to move, so it won't be a stalemate. And currently this king does have a square to move b7, so even if you sacrifice the queen on a square where the king has to capture it, um, it, it won't be a draw. So in this position, black has to try their last minute thing by playing queen c8, hoping that white would capture the knight with either one of their pieces so that they take in c7 and it's going to be a draw. But no, in this position, white plays this beautiful move, queen c6 check, and after king a7, now they take the knight 
and this king is not on stalemate anymore. Wherever uh, you move your queen to try to sacrifice it, this king will have an uh, escape. So I was very much impressed by this position and um, I calculated it from the first move. So that was certainly a good calculation position. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you to Johanna Nafek for this composition. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye.